स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning. Welcome to the fourth lecture in the series Introduction to Interaction Design. I am your course interest instructor Dr. Sonal Atre, Assistant Professor in Department of Design at IIT Roorkee. So, in the last lecture we saw a few processes such as double diamond design thinking, six thinking hats and many others which are used by designers to identify problem areas and come up with solutions for the users. So, today we will see that how can we understand users better because users are the primary uh, consumer and we all designers are trying to provide them with the best experience possible. So, it is very important to see that how can we understand our user better. So, people come in all different shapes and sizes, they have different behaviors they have different tendencies, preferences. So, there are n number of permutation and combinations when it comes to uh, users, but it is a challenging and satisfying job for the uh, designer to cater to the needs of all these users. So, for example, uh, children, how they are so different than us adults or how as we are aging and getting from a child to an adult to an elderly, how our body is changing, how our motor functions are changing and how our even our preferences are changing. So, for example, the toothbrush for children, if you see, it is more fat, it is more chubby because children hold products very differently than adult people. So, adults have more control, they can do more precise functions. So, they can hold and uh, with the fingers, but children have very uh, uh, chubby hands, they do not have that much of control. So, for them the toothbrushes are designed to be very uh, fat, so they can hold them easily. Similarly, uh, for all such different groups of people, we have to be mindful that how are we designing. Now, if we take an example of the product. Uh, which is a bike. Now, in more developed countries in the west, the bikes are used or motorbikes or motorcycles, they are mostly used for recreational activities or for having fun, for going on rides. But in countries like India and several other countries in the South Asian belt, where these bikes serve more purposes or you know better purposes than just being used for enjoyment. So, they are used for carrying goods, they are used for transporting people and they have several other uses in the farmlands. So, people come up with these innovative ways to use the, uh, this product. Now, it is important for designers to see that what works for one group may not work for the other group. So, a simple example of that is the preference of color. Like red color in some cultures is considered auspicious, in some other cultures the color white is considered auspicious. So, as a designer I have to be very mindful who am I designing for, who is my audience and what are their uh, preferences and uh, choices because they all determine whether my product will be successful or not. Now, user goals, what are the goals of the user, what is it that the user wants. Now, if the business is only focusing on how to achieve my business goal, how to make more revenue, how to generate more income and we are not addressing the user's personal goals, then that business is more likely to fail. We can see this from an example of the company Amazon. So, this company is known for its uh, customer centric approach. So, uh, 
it has given a lot of services like customer reviews and ratings so that other custom customers can make an informed choice, uh, personalized recommendations, uh, it has a good uh, customer support, good delivery practices. So, all of these factors because ultimately the user feels in the center of the attention of the company. So, uh, that also means good business for the company. Another example is the company Amul, which uh, makes uh, butter and a lot of different products. So, it has a wide range of products to cater to the Indian population. It is uh, an affordably priced uh, market. So, products can be afforded by a larger number of people. The quality assurance is provided by the company they focus on nutrition and the most important probably point is that Amul operates as a cooperative. So, with the dairy farmers who are the primary stakeholders. So, Amul prioritizes the welfare and prosperity of da uh, the dairy farmers and ensures a sustainable supply of quality milk and dairy products and this meets the needs of both the groups which is the farmers as well as the consumers. So, what are the user goals and how as designers do we identify them? What is the guarantee that this goal is actually a genuine goal or not? Are all goals same for all users or do they change over time? So, we need to be able to answer these questions in order to uh, identify and understand our users better. So, most often than not user goals are quite different than what we think uh, that they may be. So, for example, let us take an example of a food delivery uh, app. So, this app may assume that users primary goal is to order food quickly and conveniently. So, they may assume this and then they may float some of their um, services like 20 minute delivery, 30 minute delivery something like that. But in reality the user's goal may not be time driven, but it may be nutrition driven or it uh, may be the, the choice of food driven. So, the user may be looking at healthy food, less oil or more options. So, uh, if the app incorporates such kind of uh, an interface where the user can interact with the app and choose based on their personal diet preferences or some other uh, requirements, then the uh, goal is achieved by the company as well as the user. Now, most of the commercially available uh, softwares and websites and other digital products uh, where they use interfaces to meet user goals. So, we will we see we notice that they make users feel unintelligent sometimes. So, the user does not uh, feel very good about themselves. They also lead the user to make some mistakes and they require too much effort to operate uh, effectively and these apps or softwares do not provide an engaging or enjoyable experience. So, for example, this is an example where maybe the user has forgotten that which card does he or she use on this platform more often than not and may have forgotten the uh, entire number of the card which would uh, not allow them to make the purchase online or maybe the app does not allow the user to access their change their password access accessing some information may be very tricky or difficult or there may be many pages through which the user will have to pass through give lot of information. So, all these kinds of interactions they lead to uh, frustration uh, when it comes to uh, interacting with their platform. Now, there are two uh, 
things one is goals and the other is the task and the activity. Now, both have difference they both are different things. So, goals are not same as tasks or activity a goal is an expectation of the end condition the final goal and activities and tasks they are steps in between which allow one person to fulfill their goal. So, we can see here that uh, the example here goal is the shopping experience and the task we can see has been broken into several parts where the design of the screen is also important. The images and product description is another task. So, the tasks are smaller and the goal is the bigger picture. Now, Don Norman describes a hierarchy in which activities are composed of tasks which are in turn composed of actions which are then themselves composed of operations. So, using this scheme Norman has coined activity centered design. So, which focuses first and foremost on the understanding of the activities that how user goes about a certain activity, what are the steps involved when he is undertaking one activity. So, according to his explanation humans adapt to the tools at hand and understanding the activities that people perform with a set of tools can more favorably influence the design of those tools. So, for example, we are using Photoshop and there are certain tools for picking the color, for selecting the loop lot of different uh, icons are there which mean certain thing save button the floppy disk as save button. So, we are uh, used to seeing those and we associate them with a certain action. So, now if we see them or similar ones in another software we will be very quick in performing that activity as opposed to trying to learn what the new tool uh, symbolizes. Now, let us look at usability and user experience goals. So, uh, usability goals are concerned with meeting specific usability criteria such as efficiency on, on the other hand user experience goals are concerned with developing the nature of the user experience. For example, the product should be aesthetically pleasing, but it is important that the distinction between these two is not very clear cut because if a product is usable, but it lacks experience the user experience and on the other hand if there is a product with good user experience can it have usability. So, these two cannot be mutually exclusive they will work together in order to provide the best experience to the user. So, we will see uh, in the next few slides that what uh, do we mean by these. So, the main question here in usability goals is that are we designing an efficient system that will allow the user to be highly productive in their work because efficiency here is the keyword and are we designing a learning tool that will be challenging and motivating. So, what is it that we are uh, designing? So, when we classify them in terms of usability and user uh, uh, goal experience, so then it makes it very clear that how do we proceed. So, uh, usability refers to uh, making sure that the interactive products are easy to learn. So, they the uh, and they are effective to use and they are enjoyable. So, some of the important uh, aspects that ensure that the uh, final product is usable these are effective to use that is effectiveness, efficiency, safety, utility, learnability and memorability. So, we will quickly look at each of these. So, if we ask is the system easy to learn as a designer 
because in usability goals we are at every step posing a question and then we are checking whether our solution is answering that or not. So, if not then do we have to change uh, something in order to be able to answer that question. So, for example, if, if I am designing a product and uh, maybe a cell phone and I am asking myself is the system easy to learn. Now, this question is very complex and it will not be easy to answer this question. So, if I ask a question which says how long will it take a user to figure out how to use the most basic functions, it is a more clear cut question, it is more uh, you know answerable. So, I can tell it will take half an hour, it will take one hour, but the first question is a very open ended question easy or not will depend on lot of factors, but when we talk about how much time maximum minimum then we can put that uh, in the bracket. So, it becomes easy for us as designers to you know uh, then uh, improve if some kind of improvement is required there. Now, effectiveness. So, uh, uh, the question that we can probably ask is that is the user able to carry out their work effectively and effectiveness refers to how good a product is at doing what it is supposed to do. So, if I am wearing a fitness watch and my purpose is to measure my steps, but it is also measuring my steps when I am driving. So, it is measuring the distance. So, is it effective? So, is it doing the job is for what it is intended? If it is not then it is something needs to be changed. Efficiency. So, efficiency refers to the way a product supports users in carrying out their tasks. So, once a user has learned how to carry out a task is the product uh, or service helping them achieve the highest level of efficiency? Is it saving their time or are is it not helping them save time? So, that is another thing that I need to ask. So, these questions can be put up by the designer for each and every step to check their product for all these individual goals. Next is safety. So, one is a physical safety that is posed by say biohazard, uh, some kind of fire or some kind of other uh, calamity. In the digital domain, this will be like making some action which is not desirable, some undesirable action. So, for example, I have spent a lot of time working on my document, but by mistake I press delete and all of it goes out of the system. But the undo button helps me get it back or even the cloud automatically takes a backup. So, all of these systems they ensure that there is safety. When I am drafting a mail and I am sending it, maybe I have uh, not attached a document. So, it will remind me document is missing. So, it will also help me to save my face during any sort of embarrassing uh, situation. So, safety is another important aspect. Utility is the extent to which the product provides the right kind of functionality, so that users can do what they need or want to do. Is it a utilitarian product or not? So, does it provide appropriate set of functions that will enable users to carry out all of their tasks? So, for example, if I am using, I am used to making sketches on a notebook, but now I am upgrading to say an a digital platform. Will I get the same strokes when I put pressure? Will my pencil mimic the actual pencil on paper or will it not give me that kind of feedback. So, utility of it that is it actually equivalent to a hand drawing or uh, uh, is it a good investment. Learnability, learnability refers to how easy a system is to learn to use. So, if I am uh, uh, I bought a new phone, how quickly can I learn it? How quickly can I learn a new laptop? If I am shifting from one brand to another, are the functions same? Uh, can I uh, uh, start operating it uh, as soon as possible or not? The next is memorability, which refers to how easy a product is to remember how to use once learned. 
can I recall the functions if I have not used say a particular software in a long time and I go back to it after a month or so, can I recall the functions or can I recall the functions of my old phone which I have not used in a while. So, that is uh, an, a feature which allows the user to uh, come back to the product and use it and start from where they left off. So, that is a very desirable requirement. Now, user experience goals. So, you can see here uh, around the circle we have efficient, effective, safe all these points which are the usability goals and in the outer diameter we have emotionally fulfilling, rewarding, aesthetics, helpful, satisfying all those points. So, the outer circle is what refers to the user experience goals. So, a number of these goals have been articulated in interaction design which cover a range of emotions and experiences that people feel. So, they include both desirable and undesirable uh, feelings and emotions and most of them are subjective qualities. So, which tell that what a user feels, how he feels about the system. So, now for example, how the experience of a person varies for the same activity over time, technology and place. So, if we try to see that how the user experience changes, we can take example of watching a movie. So, earlier the only option was to go to a movie theatre and uh, watch the movie on a big screen. So, there uh, having popcorn, cold drinks, so it, it was like a ritual and then you know people sitting around all the uh, uh, moments in the movie where there was some uh, scary part or, or happiness. So, there would be a shared experience. Slowly we move to having these uh, uh, DVDs, CDs. So, now people could have that experience at home, so with their maybe with their family and now we have all these OTTs, uh, we can now watch a movie on our laptop, we can put in our earphones, have a you know a very personal experience. So, how over time the technology changes, people's uh, preferences also change and the whole experience is very different. All three, four different uh, modes of watching a movie give a very different uh, feeling to the user. Now, accessibility and inclusive design. So, this is uh, a, a very important aspect when we are uh, designing because we have already talked about the different user goals. The usability and the user experience uh, uh, as well and how the designers need to cater to the needs of all types of people. Now, accessible uh, uh, design focuses on creating products, services or environments that can be easily accessed, understood and used by individuals with impairments. So, it aims to remove all kinds of barriers so that they can have as good as an experience as people without any kind of impairment. So, the impairment can be of different types, it could be sensory uh, where they maybe cannot see or hear, it could be physical uh, where they could have some problem with the motor functions or it could also be cognitive. So, wherein the uh, brain function could be affected. So, all these come under the uh, area of impairment and how can accessible systems be designed for them. So, for example, uh, when we are watching a movie and there are those captions, people with hearing disabilities can uh, read the captions and understand what is happening in the movie. But for a person who is hearing for them also the captions, uh, closed captions do not pose any problem. So, there are two ways in which we can achieve accessibility. So, one is through inclusive design of technology and the other is through the assistive technology. So, the three broad types of impairments are sensory, physical, cognitive like I mentioned earlier. So, for uh, depending on the 
level of the capability of the person, we will see whether an inclusive design strategy will take care of the issue or whether we have to go for an assistive technology. So, impairment can also be categorized as permanent, temporary and situational. So, permanent impairment where a person has been for example, in a wheelchair for 10 years and uh, uh, in the future also it looks like uh, they will be using the wheelchair. Temporary may be with somebody who has gotten a fractured arm and it will heal in a few months time and situational could be depending on my surroundings. Like for example, if I am trying to study, but there is a wedding going on in the neighborhood and a loudspeaker is uh, on. So, it will interfere with my uh, uh, studying and that will cause an impairment to me, because I will not be able to uh, you know function the way I was planning to. So, difference between accessibility and usability, we have already seen usability uh, before, but what is the difference between uh, these two. Now, uh, accessibility can also be uh, the problem in accessing something can also be caused by the technology. Like for example, if I am um, uh, you know coming to a city from the village, probably I will not be able to uh, converse in that language or if I am going to a place where they speak some other language, I may not be able to uh, read or co converse or get information. At the same time, if uh, the digital platform that I am using is not catering to my need, I am not able to use it, it is also making me a person with some kind of an uh, impairment or my accessibility has been compromised there. Now, accessibility and usability are two distinct terminologies, uh, but they are somewhat related in the overall scheme of uh, design. So, accessibility refers to the degree to which a product, service or environment can be used by people with disabilities. Now, these are the things which make a person disabled, but they have a impairment. So, how these uh, uh, product services make them uh, uh, unable to access them due to their impairment. Also, accessibility involves ensuring that individuals with impairments can perceive, understand, navigate and interact with a product or service in a way that people without impairments do. So, that is what accessibility means and usability on the other hand is something which makes the product or service to be used effectively, efficiently and satisfactorily by the intended user. So, it means that we have to design user experiences which involve understanding the users very well, their behaviors, preferences and other uh, nuances, so that their needs are met and it ensures that the service is user friendly, intuitive and it is easy to navigate by the users. Now, inclusive is a broader term, it is a broader umbrella, wherein it means that people with all types of capabilities or challenges should be able to access. So, they could be people uh, who be may be from some particular income group or uh, age. So, they could be several factors, but it should not hinder them from uh, enjoying the product or services just like any other uh, person who is not falling in the same group. Now, a uh, difference between accessibility and uh, inclusivity is like we can understand from an example automatic doors with uh, motion sensors. So, when uh, we enter into a space where there are automatic doors, of course, uh, somebody on a wheelchair, the moment it uh, approaches the doors uh, open and they are able to pass through. So, it is allowing them the access to enter a space without going through the trouble of 
uh, opening the door themselves or asking for help and at the same time uh, healthy people are also able to pass through the door. Uh, even the low, uh, low floor buses that we have wherein the floor is so low that uh, elderly can climb onto it or the wheelchair user can also climb into the bus. At the same time, other people are also able to climb onto a bus. And an example of uh, inclusive design would be the Google Assistant, uh, the Google Translate uh, service, wherein if there is any document, text or even a spoken uh, sentence, so Google Translate can help translate that into the dialect that I understand, so that I am, I am able to communicate or understand the information provided there in a, a better manner. So, uh, this brings us to the end of today's lecture. In today's lecture, we made an attempt to understand the users a little bit better and to see that how accessibility, inclusiveness, uh, they are important when we are designing products and systems for uh, users and how the whole experience should uh, be seamless and uh, as good as for anyone uh, without any impairments as well. So, uh, uh, thank you and I will meet you in the next lecture.